Hello and welcome to B Roundup. This week we have a discussion on Indian Leadership Survey. So we have with us Mr. Paritosh Joshi, Principal uh, Provocatory Advisory, Mr. Jishnu Sen, uh, CMO in Future Retail, Mr. Ashish Bhaseen, CEO Densu Ages Network Greater South and Chairman and CEO India, Mr. Raj Jain, CEO BCCL and Mr. Shashi Sina, CEO IPG Media Brands India. So I'll start with uh, the key talk about the technicalities. Uh, I'll start with you, Sarshi, sir, on uh, how the pattern has changed of the survey. You know, uh, what I saw, there's a lot of emphasis on digital, like uh, against giving a white paper to fill in, this time you have digital surveys being uh, done. So how has that helped uh, in building the case? So I think what has happened is the checks and balances, because it's a large survey and actually the right guy to speak as a techcom chair, Mr. Vikram Sakuja, but I'm doubling up since he's not here that uh, I think the overall focus is to make it tighter in terms of controls. So, you know, the starting point, what is called the C form, all that used to go out early into the market and uh, people had the chance of people knowing four days, five days in advance, all that has been curtailed. So, digital is a way to ensure the processes that they are more robust, uh, outliers are cut out very quickly, you know, and there is less chance of leak because one of the concerns we used to have earlier on that probably on the ground there could be there were chances of infiltration in certain markets. So our attempt has to be curved that. So I'm not going to do the details, but that's the attempt. So as a publisher, sir, uh, does that put more faith into the study? Because we have seen a lot of controversies around this every year. Yeah, so I've been personally associated with this journey for about four years now. And I have to say that every year I've seen progress being made. This probably is the best round we've had, and I'm sure the future rounds will be even better. Um, you know, earlier there was a lot of um, skepticism about the results, but also I think there were certain publishers who probably thought that they, uh, we didn't need a, a readership survey. And I think I have to compliment the advertising agencies and so on who actually forced the publishing industry to say that without a good measurement, there is no advertising. Uh, that's the way the world is going. And I think, uh, you know, that opened our eyes into, you know, investing in it. And I think since then we've been investing not only financially, but also from a process and people standpoint. Uh, and I personally believe that we may not be there right now in terms of being 100% right. But I think we have closed a lot of loopholes and gaps uh, which were there in the system. And today the faith in the survey and the numbers is far more than it used to be in the past. So we feel good about it, but I'm sure the future rounds will get better and better. So when you started this, um, when the work on the survey started, was there any specific direction that you had given them that, uh, to keep uh, you know, tight control so that uh, numbers come out correct or you know, to have l uh, less infiltration? Look, uh, for any currency to be acceptable, first of all, you have to make sure that the currency is robust. So it's not me, but the entire committee, people like Shashi, uh, Paritosh, Vikram, everybody has worked hard over the years to try to see that we can get it as streamlined as possible. The biggest problem with IRS was that it hadn't come out for three or four years. So last year we brought it out after a gap of three or four years, so it was in a sense a renaissance, uh, bringing back of that. The attempt is that going forward it should be much more regular. In fact, we're moving from annual now to quarterly, hopefully, and uh, you know, it takes a little bit of a drama out of the whole annual launch in that sense and makes it more continuous, which is how uh, research should be. But for a currency to be more acceptable, like both Shashi and Raj were saying, it's got to have robustness into it. So a lot of measures were taken, like digitizing of the C form, which uh, Shashi mentioned, uh, data forensics. So one of the things that uh, data forensics today help you do is you can analyze the data and figure out where the outliers are and then look at those more robustly. We've used uh, GPRS, we've used OTPs uh, to make sure that you know the interview is happening actually in the place where it's happening without even the interviewer knowing uh, some part at random and some part where he doesn't know where it gets recorded uh, on that. The whole process for the first time was CAPI, which is computer-aided personal interview. And remember, this is a huge, this is the world's largest survey of this kind, 3,25,000 sample size. And in a very diverse country like India, uh, from the smallest of the villages to the biggest of towns. So the whole process has been to build in that robustness so that faith and confidence in this comes out and to make it as regular as is possible. Jishnu, uh, you as an advertiser, when you see the sample size and when you see the process, uh, you are one of the largest advertisers in newsprint, right? So does that give you a sense of satisfaction that yes, it 
news is um, newspapers are something that we'll keep on betting on i think new <coughs> there wasn't any doubt at least in our head for a long time that newspapers are something to bet on uh but that may be unique to our industry and i'm not making a general comment on behalf of all advertisers but having this data kind of helps us at least justify some of our decisions that we make it also helps us tweak i mean there have been interesting trends that have come up about language vernacular versus english for example that helps especially if you're in diverse and as we expand into smaller and smaller towns uh, that kind of data helps us a lot sure Paritosh, you have been involved in this process and as part of the technical committee for a really long time and you know what goes behind the scenes. What do you think is still missing to, to for the data to be complete? It's going to be a painful answer <laughs> because <laughs> I'm going to stand in contrast with what the four gentlemen have already said. So let me take it from the top, right? When two significant publications go missing from the study, and all that they appear as is a footnote saying that this data shall be released later it gets you concerned about what it is that's holding back that data so even as for example both in fact all three of them have already said that you know a great deal of concern has gone into ensuring that there was security and high standards of ethical behavior in the way that the entire survey was conducted if two big mastheads one big one in english and one big one in hindi go missing then somebody must ask the question what it is that caused them to go missing i'll leave this question at this level and not go any further on it but i have a whole bunch of other issues okay and the first set of issues have to do with this beast called total leadership right now three of the people here shashi ashish and i were in the board of mruc uh in the readership studies council of india at the time when we agreed 9 years back that tr was not a usable number simply because the way that the you know the category of pub, of of media is sold is average issue readership and we agreed in a meeting of the rsci uh, that we would drop it we let go of it it used to be there it was something that IRS used to do we dropped it now tr actually quite frankly is a measure of recall and not a measure of readership right there is uh there is very interesting curve that you know we can all later on go and have a look at maybe you'll be able to put it on your slide later it's called the ebbinghaus forgetting curve ebbinghaus was a psychologist of the late 19th century who actually tried to figure out how long memory survives right short term memory how long it takes to form how long it survives now the problem is that short term memory actually lasts very very briefly and at the end of one day if you've had an input in the morning at the end of one day you pretty much lost 70% of what you picked up in the morning na now which is the reason why recency has always been the measure that we've used for measuring newspapers you don't know what you read 3 days back you know even less about what you read 5 days back now here's what's happened in this study it reports that average issue readership of dailies has come down it was 16.3% it's come down to 16.1% 16.5 to 16.1 so mean. some yeah. it's it's yeah. dropped yeah. right three day readership has dropped the u3d number has dropped the u5d number has also dropped right now if the three numbers of the recent reading have dropped then it defies you know my mind at least to say that you go from there to total readership whatever that is and i'll come to why tr is a problem for even publication houses and publishers how that goes up of course there's a bit of an issue there itself the statistics that uh, the mruc uses and has always used is what is called a uh, 10 uh, 90 20 So a 10% incidence of anything in the population is measured at a 90% confidence interval with a 20% relative error. All right. Now this incidence is 16%, so the relative error will be slightly better. The relative error might be say 10%. What is happening is that this so-called growth, which has been reported in TR, is actually within the relative error, which means to say that the number in fact could be the same as the number the last time. But there's more problems. 
total readership actually corresponds exactly this one month readership corresponds exactly to average issue readership for a monthly right because the recent issue the recency issue is the last issue uh, available right and the whole idea from an advertiser's perspective is that i am investing money in something which corresponds to the frequency of that publication right an advertiser couldn't care less whether you have read 2 minutes of a newspaper in the last one month but 2 minutes of a magazine which is a monthly magazine in the last one month it still stays it's not turned into raddi right it gets junked when the next issue comes now what you're doing is you're placing a measure of newspaper readership on absolutely pari pasu with the average issue readership of the monthly magazine and i find this extremely ironical considering that this same committee has been going around saying that they actually want to emphasize measurement of magazines and periodicals i'm not done yet i have more to say and could i respond uh, to some uh, of that sure, please, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. because you go yeah, we'll respond yeah, otherwise we forget we don't sure, have memory sure. you want to go shall i go yeah, i think it's safer so, for me to respond yes, than you yes I, i think you do so so, so i think uh, if i may a dear friend of mine we so but i think we uh, i must strongly rebut some of the thing which is saying so the first thing on a publication group which is missing you know i can afford to say it others can't and i'm known to speak it is the first time in the history of the survey paritosh ran it i ran it is never happened and he's to blame i am to blame that we never had the guts or the balls to do what the current uh, committee led by ashish and mr kamal has done you know there was some some doubt in terms of this not mentioned anyway on infiltration correct there's some doubt and concern on there so it's been held back pending uh, looking at details stuff like that which is the, let me not say much obviously you won't go beyond a point you won't say it no one has the courage to say it i'm saying it so i think the the lack of i think you know what he's seeing as a negative in my mind is a big positive is never before happened you know when he was chairman i can give you 50 examples when you were running the research there was rampant in, infiltration i was there i ran it there was infiltration we wrapped them on the knuckles or wrapped them on nothing happened after that this is the first time there'll be a systemic change hopefully after this i'm saying it strongly no one else can say it second part on the tr tr and thank you for asking the question thank you for calling it out so i could respond rather than mr basin yeah the tr part again if i may raise my hand i'm guilty for it you know this tr part was raised not this time last time it came in the last irs was raised out sorry sir for uh, answering this there was a reason for tr so partly what it says in terms of decay of memory even the average readership is a memory yeah. what did you read yesterday he is right all we have it's not that we have knocked off ar we have put in multiple data points i'll assure you a lot of clients like him like uh, fmcgs will still use ar the planners will whatever the data whether it's gone up or come down is immaterial they will go by ar there is a purpose for tr there are two three purposes one is there is uh, uh, you know for certain categories it may make sense secondly you know your habit is changing you're not reading the newspaper every day so in a way while his memory point is right you will capture that but the larger point is for catching our what he call robust uh, you know processes to catch infiltration or our forensic process tr is one of the rules and what it does is not only are we doing it internally by the way tr was always captured we start putting it out it was captured it was put out last time we have just built on it it also gives a sense of transfer to the entire ecosystem for example his research guys can turn around and say listen these are the ratios i can come to the conclusion where the ratios are high so in a way we are putting out forensics into the open market so make no mistake chances are some of my big advertisers still go by the ar that's not going to change just news media agency still going to go by ar but it will it, it tr serves a multiple purpose is my response to parithos and I, i only to add to that i think shashi has captured it brilliantly i won't respond on the first yeah. point uh, other than to say that that data is under review <laughs> but uh, on this uh, tr issue you know uh, the more choice you give to a planner or to a client the better decision making happens so it would have been a big concern if we had removed air and said you only use tr yeah, yeah. today also what is happening is the changing i mean 9 years ago that was right but in today's scenario everybody doesn't read the newspaper every day people are traveling they don't have time some people read it once in 3 days some people once in 7 days etc so what this does is it gives the media planners the clients more options to study it deeper we haven't taken away anything we've only added on something else uh, so i just feel it's a big addition to that and we should as an industry very positively look on it because a sign of changing times with internet today 
most many people are and the research shows that many people are now using internet for news for yeah. immediacy of yeah. news and are reading the newspapers for more in depth coverage or for better views etc so it's not necessary that whatever was the reading habit for 50 years or 9 years ago will continue like that today's generation is changing very fast so it's important in my view to give all the options to the media planners and to the clients and not assume that they are silly they will know which to choose when so I actually by to see it as a good addition not as a subtraction. I'm nowhere near as technically qualified as all of you but I'm going to I think the last point Ashish made is very relevant to us. I mean even when you do let's change industry and when we talk about television measurement there are various kinds of measurement that you look at whether it's what an individual program does what an overall channel does and hence I feel that both TR and AR help us and especially when you go down from the overall newspaper number to individual publications helps us in deciding where to go for immediacy and where to go for long term campaigns so if i if i'm going to look at let's say some and we i was we were discussing you know literally the effect that we've had examples of people walking into our stores with that morning's newspaper saying oh. that this is what to action. this is yeah. this is what you said the price is let let me see what it is versus if i had to consider a publication as a long term buy right then i would look at probably both the numbers in conjunction actually this is an interesting point because nobody thinks that print is a product which could be called to action so we all think it's for branding and you know telling people that here we exist so oh, when advertisers come and you know uh, advertise in newspapers how has that changed you think that mindset has changed like call to action or because now these days digital is the platform which is more perceived as call to action or you know building leads see um i've been a retailer in the past so yeah. i can say from <laughs> my <retailer> experience <laughs> that uh, you know across the world newspapers yeah. are the best medium for call to action especially in the retail type world as jignesh is saying you know you you just take the days price of let's say a brand like sir 1 kilo or something people will come with that cutting and say you said it's a 10 rupee off and where is my 10 rupee off because they can relate to it when they see it on a digital or a television television i think it doesn't even register but in in digital all maybe it'll be so i i personally feel call to action is 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 very um, uh, very much a part of this uh, this medium the other one of course is the uh, the distraction and i think whether it is 2 minutes or 25 minutes or 100 minutes the fact of the matter is when you are reading a paper you can't unfortunately do many more things but when you are uh, looking at your mobile or you are looking at television you can be distracted by 50 other things so i think there are some uniquenesses about this medium uh, which i think if advertisers understand more than numbers then they will likely to use it for campaigns uh, which will uh, you know add up to uh, you know whatever is the objective of the brand at that point in time and i can tell you i mean from my experience 40 years in 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 sales and marketing I think branding and brand building as we used to know 20 years ago is dead. You know, today it's all about sales numbers and revenues and so on and so forth. Brands are going and coming and uh, consumers have become much more uh, you know flirtatious with brands. So I think the primary objective of all marketers and brand managers is what I want to do for this years or this months or this days. Same. It is nothing to do with you know long term brand building. I think there are very few categories in which that is happening. and for that i think paper still serves its purpose do you think this data will also bring out certain bring back certain categories which there is a constant talk of missing or moving away from print my own view is that i think two three things will happen one is what we all said that i think it will uh, create a measurement and therefore more transparency in the whole process earlier you know print advertising was more like a feel now it's going to become more like feel and numbers both and qualitative and quantity that is always good and as an industry i think we have taken the right step to be put it out there and say uh, whether it's tr ar i don't want to get into the debate but i think overall readership of papers is growing uh, unlike you know what people say in the west and india has always you know de- defied a lot of western logic i think a large part of it is to do with our um, uh, our literacy uh, we still have low literacy compared to the west people are just beginning to learn to read and then they move up the continuum and english still in um, in our case which is important to us remains a medium of business uh, you know that uh, just even knowing a little bit of english can help you to find your first service job which is what is india is now offering there are no manufacturing jobs in india 
and service jobs require human interaction and therefore require communication skills and english is a part of that communication skill whether you like it or not uh, so i think uh, from that perspective i think uh, the, the medium is uh, going to continue to be very relevant and bring back a lot of advertisers who might otherwise flow with the tide and say oh newspapers old news because that's what they hear from their headquarters true <laughs> See, India is in a very unique position. I, I always say this. We are the only major advertising market in the world. By the way, this is the first year that we will cross $10 billion as a market. So that makes us a major advertising market, right? It's the only major advertising market where all media are growing. So ob obviously, the rates of growth are different. So digital is growing much faster. Some media are growing slower, etc. But all media are growing. And I think for the next three to five years, they will continue to grow newspapers because of like Raj literacy. said literacy as well as disposable income I mean you know it's you need money to buy and therefore readership increases television still I mean with 100% electrification still there are so many more households that can uh, come in digital of course we know the story and it's growing so we are in that happy position and in India it's not a question of digital or print TV or print TV or digital it's actually going to be and Right? And that's the only way smart brands have realized that and they're already using it well. And that's the only way brand building can happen effectively in India, at least for the next three to five years. Maybe later on it might be different. So we shouldn't get too carried away by what's happening in Western Europe or what's happening in North America. Their issues are very different. Yeah. Uh, it is true that in many of those markets, print is collapsing, even television is collapsing, etc., etc. In India, I don't foresee that happening for the, at least for the next five years. Uh, when I saw uh, the growth for Hindi versus English versus regional, I realized actually Hindi has grown more, which is very uh, strange to the regional debate we keep having, you know. So, is there a specific reason that, uh, Parishas, you would say that the growth rate actually, for Hindi is more? In fact, only Hindi will grow from this point onwards. The problem with the regional, significant regional languages, whether you talk Malayalam, whether you talk Tamil, you talk Bengali, Marathi, uh, literacy rates have been generally higher in these areas than they have been in the Gangetic plains and incomes have generally been higher so therefore those issues of you know breaking into a new home uh, is still available in that broad swath of the Indo-Gangetic plain. It's not really available in the rest of the country. Electrification is happening over there so therefore there's also TV penetration still to go there. Uh, you know something like one fourth of the audience in Eastern UP, one fourth of the audience in North Bihar still doesn't have a TV at home. The rest of the country, uh, as Bach said a little earlier, 200 million homes out of 280 million. So most parts of the country, the penetrations are at a level from where you don't have much room to grow. In fact, there is potential of falling back. So the growth will come from Hindi. And uh, it's coming in two ways. One is uh, horizontal growth of existent titles which have actually added editions but it's also small local publications which are delivering this entire the other big power that print has which is hyper localization yeah. so you know a, a product like say Haribhumi in certain parts of Haryana and Rajasthan uh, caters uniquely to that audience which no national imprint can really do so there is a lot of that stuff happening Whereas in the rest of the country, the regionals actually have tapered off. I mean, they are now going to flatline. In Marathi, Tamil, Malayalam, they'll flatline. There'll be some growth in the periodicals. But there are a couple of other things which I do want to talk about uh, about the study. I'm not completely <laughs> sure. done <laughs> sure, sure, sure. beating up on <laughs> it. So let me yeah. say that. You know, there's an interesting little number hidden in the study about digital penetration as seen from Q1, Q2, Q3 of 17 plus Q4 of 19 and an unroll as they call it of Q419 by itself. The four quarters edition says 24%. The one quarter unroll says 36%, yes. right? Yeah. Just goes to show that there is a damping of the numbers by the previous three quarters. But conversely, if numbers can get damped, they can also get boosted. And here's the thing. If the total time spent on media has not materially shifted, right, that number is not terribly fungible. That number may be about like four hours a day or something like that, of which in any case three and a half hours get taken up by TV, about half an hour almost increasingly gets taken up by digital, 
right so everything else gets squeezed into the residual amount of time after that for us now if digital has grown this much and if tv has also grown it's gone from 75 to 77% or something like that the main growth coming in rural of course because urban is already highly penetrated then this one quarter unroll there is going to be a price to pay for it because when they come to Q2 the damping effect of the previous two quarters from 17 will reduce right a whole year's worth of field work was not done and you can only start doing you know one thing that we all agree on any measurement is measurements are about vectors and not scalars it's not a scalar quantity and until you get a vector you can't actually make much with this particular number right as you continue the study into a second and a third quarter then the weight of the current phenomenon the current reality will start to reflect more accurately reading too much into these numbers including reading into these numbers that we are doing well on readership may be underestimating the effect of the fact that that field work belongs to 2017 yeah. it finished in august or september of 17 then we went into a holiday for one year and then revived it in november december all right we don't know what happened during that time but we do know that that's the time when geo went crazy all right that's the time when digital uptake went crazy so i would treat all these numbers specifically because of this digital unroll of 36 percent with enormous amounts of caution and arriving at you know unequivocal conclusion saying that we have done well on readership and we are actually growing on readership i'd say hold that enthusiasm for the moment by the way i also want to say i am a great believer in print if any of this sounds like i don't believe in print let me set that at rest all right one of the things that i keep talking about is how did guardian turn around yeah. Yeah. how did new york times turn around yeah you know this uh debt norska turn around they've turned around because they believe that there are other ways of doing stuff with the newspaper by the way the measurement currency itself will have to evolve the nrs in the uk died a few years ago which we have not noticed because we don't pay too much attention to them they now call themselves the publishers content measurement uh, company right it's a section 8 company equivalent in the in the united kingdom and they are saying that we now will give you an aggregate measure which includes all the possible points of contact right irs will have to evolve this is not the irs of the future right now you have another problem the periodicities which will enable you to get a uh, you know multiple touch points view of the media don't exist anymore broadcast india and bark operate with one particular period of research in fact increasingly with a different segmentation bark operates with the new sec version and now you still have nccs here where mruc is whining quite rightly about the fact that the nr the nr the nccs does not work you know the other big issue which i think is going to have to be handled by the great and the good is that we've got to find a way by which we can make peace between the two big media platforms there has to be a way otherwise there is no way that you can ever that an advertiser can ever actually get a complete view of the media landscape that her brands are getting into I fully agree with Paritosh on this. Uh, I think it's a crying need for the industry to at least have a common platform. Yeah. And, I, and I, would, I would actually add on to that, Paritosh, not just for the two big studies, so the, uh, including for no, digital. No, absolutely. Yeah. Right, because uh, you know what is happening is that at least the universe we can all agree has to be there the same no universe common, that you operate yeah, on. There's right? no parity. Uh, what are we doing? We're the same set of, virtually the same set of clients, virtually the same set of agencies often the same media owners also yeah. we're just doing two researches and then spending a lot of time trying to reconcile the base and the good news on that six and a half lakh respondent homes in the last one year correct i mean how insane is that yeah so and without getting any improvement on our statistical confidence but the, the good news on that is with the efforts of people like shashi and a few other uh, people we've already started making efforts at uh, at least to start that conversation now in our industry, it does take a long time to get all stakeholders aligned. All, all of you are aware of that. But at least now the industry is thinking that way. And I'm optimistic that maybe in a year or two years time frame, we will get to that thing that there is a common platform on which we One operate. It is, it is insane. I mean, uh, to be doing this three times over for no reason. So would you agree as a publisher, because not only we are in the publishing business, there's a television, there's a digital. So this disparity and there's no common yardstick which is missing, to what extent that actually impacts 
the overall business also publishing business or the tv business or the digital business yeah so i think um, obviously from a business perspective measurement is one aspect of it it's in various buckets today but uh, i mean it is available uh, it'll be useful if you can pull in the resources and get better data on across uh, you know mediums and that'll be but that's only one input into it um i think what is more important i think is that you know publishers like who's who were kind of morphed into digital as well as tv in some ways um is uh, is that we need to train our people uh, especially the 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 sales force the people who actually sell advertising to be able to f- sell a unified solution to our advertiser especially the smaller and medium advertiser you know the big companies and the big brands and you know with the intermediaries and the media agencies in between they are able to figure out what to do is the little sari wala guy who's suffering to figure out what should i do because his son tells him dad if you have not advertised in digital you haven't advertised but he doesn't know enough to be able to say that uh, you know should he do it or should he not do it so his starting point is acha beta sms bhejo and then we'll start from there Uh, so i think what i think there is a opportunity for people like us to do is to fill that gap because they are not going to come to agencies you know they have a direct contact with us they have a relationship with us but we need to be able to provide them a solution which works for them not only in print not only digital maybe television in this case not probably not relevant but across the platform so that they can ga- get more and i think increasingly we are moving in that direction where one sales person can meet one client and offer them a solution which works for them and that's how i think it's uh, going to happen the other thing was about um, you know this uh, thing that you were talking about breaking uh, news into uh, hyper local and how that is being served a hey, jishnu how would you look at that because again future has many formats including smaller formats and be so when you look at a publication uh, that as big as the times of india group you have got smaller like a mumbai mirror catering to the Mum- uh, city of mumbai but would you go deeper in it would, that's how you see print rolling in the future so so once again i mean i think when you look at it from a retailer's point of view and especially a retailer like us who are in the grocery business right mm-hmm. where hyper local is indispensable uh, to us i mean and that's where print local print as as local as possible because the price of onion is not a national uh, thing the price of locally sourced vegetables or locally Correct. sourced anything can't be reduced to a 30 second tv spot that you run a national so and i also know the pains that we go through when we run a national campaign which is literally i mean to go, use an old world term 465 artworks have to be made because the price of one article is, is different everywhere. as even if you take a one paper 33 editions the price changes and and that store wants to push different products so hence from our point of view whether and i'm not even getting into the semantics of ar and tr as long as there seems to be a general direction that that medium is still playing the role it has and there is no dramatic shift in it instinct and intuition honestly and this is me going to markets etc and seeing the phenomena of people bringing that paper into the store leads me to have faith at an overall level in the medium still and i'm not what i liked about what you said is i wish digital television print could all come together on one platform right that that i think is a crying need for from all of us and whoever takes the lead in it is most welcome and if we can play a role so hyper localization hugely important from a retail point of view and i would imagine it it can only help yeah so just to add to what uh, is being said here in terms of retail and again i'll like to put my retail hat on along with the media hat on a little bit and it's something i discuss internally with our team as well uh, you know any store will have depending on the size 500 to 5000 customers which are loyal to the store chances are in today's day and age they'll probably know you'll probably know the mobile numbers of half of them and chances are therefore you can reach out to them through their mobile numbers and so on so there is a marketing possibility already you know direct but i think mobile sms type thing is not the most effective way of communicating and we all know that because we are more deleting more sms's than we are reading so i think there are many opportunities plus we don't know from a retail perspective who are the customers i'm not attracting you know because that is what my interest is 
so, so that is at one level, which I think, uh, you know, uh, as a print industry, we are trying to do more and more of because uh, our next stage of emphasis is get to know your reader. We have often ignored our reader as an individual. We have looked at readers in clusters of how, what, how do you consume politics, how do you consume sports and so on. But get to know the reader because we know the address of every reader. It's a unique industry where we know where they live and you know what time they get their paper and what time they get their milk. So if we are able to get that kind of data and then put it along with our um, uh, medium and work with uh, you know uh, retailers, uh, then I think we can create solutions. Add to that the, the mix of a marketeer and marketing is also becoming very hyper local, especially in grocery, etc. I want to run a promotion in Gurgaon or maybe in, in southern part of Gurgaon because my say, brand um, uh, X is not selling well there but doing well in the north of Gurgaon. I can do that through a price promotion, through a whatever with this kind of an opportunity. I can't do it with any other medium at all. So I think we need to now with this data and with this thought move forward and use print to, uh, uh, to a level where it has never been used before rather than saying oh you know you should I should compete with television or with digital because cost of reach and so on and so forth at a national level I don't think print it is ever going to be a, the, so I think we have to more and more understand our medium as use it for these kind of activities then try and compete on on you know just reach so just to add I mean the, from any national brand point of view the other there is Print will never be able to, and that's the counter to, uh, you know, as you expand nationally and if you have a footprint across 250 stores, if there is pure awareness building, I mean, irrespective of these numbers, if, I'm, if I get into a cost per million number, the television industry will always be more efficient. It's about choosing judiciously. But, you know, if I may add to what they're saying, one of the reasons why in, in India the adex is, 0.6, 0.7% of GDP, unlike US and China, is because you have so many national advertisers. In China, if you see, there's a fair degree of what we call SMEs, yeah, local. Uh, so, I mean, in a manner of speaking, radio and print are the options for them. So, as and this, if the country has to grow, growth has to come from there. And the growth will come from the natural fuel uh, category, like I said, to a certain extent, digital, but primarily print and radio. Uh, somewhere in the survey, it was mentioned that uh, NCCS. Uh, so, a 38 percent decline in D and E uh, cities, right? Is that an area of concern? Uh, do you think that will catch up in the longer run or what actually led to that decline? So, it, it is an area of concern and uh, I think as an industry we have to apl uh, apply our minds and get to a solution. We don't really have a solution on that. The reason is that NCCS is based largely on uh, durables ownership, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So, now as time is passing, as electrification is becoming near 100 percent, as disposable incomes are increasing, there are lesser and lesser number of households who don't have any one of those uh, thing, like fan and mm -hmm. you know, even ACs, washing machines, I mean everything, the penetration is increasing for all of those. So therefore the D&D, &D, there is clearly a decline happening. Now the whatever the market research gurus, SOMR or whoever has to come up with something that takes care of this. At the moment, uh, it's becoming a little bit of a blunt instrument because everybody is getting out of the D&E &E very rapidly. So it's, it's soon it's going to be, it'll cease to be of any meaning to look at D&E &E as per NCCS. So it's definitely an area I feel where the industry needs to evolve its thinking. Also now that there is a plan to roll out IRS every quarter to present the data every quarter, mm. but it was, uh, what should be the first, I mean how should that be tackled, you know quarter on quarter. Uh, we have seen in the past that every time the data had come out, there were always issues regarding the data. Well, I guess part of that got answered right in the beginning that the, the issue that we faced was that the study was accused of being corrupt in some ways, that the data was not trustworthy because it had been tampered with, that there were some vested interests that had fooled around with it. Now this time around, uh, it's been called out. Right? So, I am glad that the reasons are good reasons rather than bad reasons. So, and, and by the way, I mean one of the things that is there in the MRUC objectives is to ensure that its output is not misused to convey a misleading impression by or to any party. It is in the stated objectives of the MRUC. So, if somebody was creating a misleading impression, that fact that, that it got set right 
means that the ethical standards are being observed, which is all to the good, right? I think there are a couple of other issues in the methodology which are terribly technical for this particular forum to talk about. For example, I could make a song and dance about the fact that the Kish grid has been dispensed with. There's a problem there, and I think maybe someday I will speak to the technical committee of the MRVC and tell them about it that this is not okay. But so there are technical issues which need to be sorted out. But I think in the main, the big, big challenge is going to be that if the baseline studies do not merge, A, and if our segmentation schema, the rubric that we are using, does not get homogenized to a new rubric which can survive. By the way, to respond to what you said earlier, Ashish, if we go back to when we rolled out the, the new consumer classification, the point that MRSI had made then was that that list of durables would be revised every three years. Which means by now we would be on the third revision of that list. Yeah. And it's not been revised even once. None of it once, has happened. Right? Yeah. So therefore now it is a very, very blunt it instrument. Is, it's an yeah. unusable instrument. Yeah. Right? And in the meanwhile, the you know, broadcast uh, audience research council has already gone and mooted its own. And there is a representative of that technical committee right here in the room. But they are not doing it. But it has been thought about. It has been placed before for consultation. I think that should be a wider consultation. I think it is a great schema. I think uh, because this rubric is dead. Very clear. So, homogenizing those, having common baselines, building on top of them, we talked about it. We said that it should be a hub and spoke study. You know, we should be able to have studies riding on the top of a common establishment. I think that issue has to be handled. I think the fact that there are so many common factors at play means that whatever the issues are, which are, you know, impediments in this have to be, have to be resolved. And I think, uh, you know, people like Raj, who actually are, you know, very powerful on all parts of this value chain, I think will play an important role in causing that to happen. So, the big messages are that we need to homogenize baselines, we need to sort out, the, so the establishment needs to be sorted out, we need to sort out the segmentation uh, schema, and then after that we need to ensure that the ethical standards are ruthlessly, unhesitatingly applied consistently. I think if we do all of those, we are on to a very, very good thing. But we need to be cautious. So can I That's respond? Yeah. So again, sorry for this thing. So I don't know if you know, sir, closely guarded secret, not too many people know, we had a common baseline when Bach started and Paritosh is the author of that uh, idea. So, you know, the, between uh, television and print, there was a common, the IRS was used as a baseline. You know, then of course, for various reasons, it fell apart and Bach decided to do its own baseline and IRS continues. So I think uh, efforts are on to uh, you know, ensure this yep. thing. I don't think it's an issue in India. It's always never an issue of uh, the logic. It's always getting stakeholders aligned. Yeah, that's that's the problem, problem. You know? The other advantage of, of this quarterly thing will be, and I'm just telling you, it will stop being an event. You know, this, oh God, IRS is coming out. As if, you know, the world, you know, some huge thing. It's like the... It's like a general election almost, you know, like yeah, that was what are, NRS uh, used uh, to be uh, right, back you know, in the day when it's like, we it's, it's like the census data or something. No, in if fact, it I happens on a continuous yeah. basis, it's I've just data that you use on an ongoing I've basis. I've told the board yeah. and in fact, right at this time itself, we've cut out the drama around it. This time we called the press uh, and briefed them because in the past we used to call everybody <laughs> big event and all of that. And I've already told the press that, look, next time we'll just send you the press release. I mean, Bach doesn't hold a uh, event First day. every <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> right? so, I think the more we make research continuous, the more we make it ongoing, uh, the better it will be and less drama on that. However, there is one impediment. Uh, I find, and uh, I don't mean to address any specific yeah. publisher, but I find publishers really short-sighted in wanting to invest even reasonable amount of monies to make research more robust. You know, they'll have thousands of crores of revenue, and we know they do have because we place that many ads with them. But they will not be willing to pay 0.2% of that revenue, 0.2% of that revenue to make the research robust, right? And then. So everybody gives you long lectures as, you know, we've got to get this sorted out, we've got to make sure that is right, we've got to, okay, fine, so this costs this much of money, it's only such a small fraction, and that's where everybody, you know, s suddenly the fingers are pointing <laughs> on all directions. So I'm hopeful that because this round, we, so we had the responsibility to, first of all, bring out an IRS after four years it was gone. You know, when I, I was, I shouldn't say took over, when I was thrust into this role uh, at the end of, uh, 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 before uh, end of 17, uh, first thing was let's get it out because it hadn't been there. Okay, the second effort with industry stalwarts like Shashi and all their help, second effort is let's make it 
again come out and make it regular from here on. So I think we moved several steps there, but to move forward at a more rapid pace, the industry needs to understand, it needs to invest in it. It's small, relatively speaking, it's small amount of monies, but they have to invest in it, otherwise it's not going to happen. And that's where a little bit of a conflict with vested interest comes in. And I think now stakeholders are getting more aligned and hopefully we'll, we'll overcome that. So your expectation from the net uh, IRS when it rolls out quarter on quarter? Well, uh, as I said earlier, I mean, we've had these debates together. There were sections of publishers who didn't want the IRS because of various reasons. Not, I mean, financial not being the primary reason, I can tell you that. Uh, because, uh, and, and I think some of it was also the robustness of the results. Because some of them were, you know, you would laugh at them and look at them and say, what are you talking about? You know, in Bombay City, for instance, or Mumbai, if somebody said that TOI was not the leading, uh, I'm not saying that this is what the IRS said, but I'm just saying uh, is not the leading English publication, then, you know, I mean, this goes against uh, wisdom. Uh, so, so I think uh, those were the issues. But I honestly believe that with the help of everybody around this table and a lot of people outside this room, uh, and also nudging from the uh, from the agencies and some big advertisers, we've all uh, you know begun to loosen up our strings, and we've all begun to realize that there is no future for print advertising unless we are able to uh, to to show some some quantitative and qualitative uh, uh, you know uh, matrix in in front of the advertiser. Uh, so I'm I'm pretty sure that you know I think this will help, and as more and more people feel comfortable, I mean as you see the you know, the first week of the reactions of these results, I haven't heard a lot of people calling and saying, oh, you know, I'm very upset because my this has happened that, yes, there is one publication or a set of publications which are missing out of these results, but there are some good reason for that and I'm sure we'll sort it out as we go along. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this and uh, I think it will help us become better publishers uh, in the future. Shashita, solving that uh, of fact that few publishers are out of the picture currently, is that for the next four quarters that we see, will you try and get them in or solve those issues? No, so, uh, let me clarify. Firstly, mm -hmm. I have not, I have not sure. privy to what's happening inside. <laughs> so, I am sure. saying this uh, in a particular way. I think, uh, I think the point being made is one group has is out just now because scrutiny is happening to the results. So, uh, and the scrutiny process obviously takes time. They may come back shortly. I don't know what the time frames are. But in a way, it's a signal to the market that listen, if there is any doubt on where the data is being uh, and our, our forensics, whatever whatever tech uh, thing the tech com is using, uh, it's not falling within the standards. So they probably ensure the data is the outliers are knocked off and the rest comes in. It will happen at some point in time. So I'm sure they're mature. It's calling out first time. Uh, the you know the board led by <coughs> Ashish has actually called out someone. If they're mature, they'll realize that listen in forward. Let's be part of the industry and move forward. So I think uh, if, if I'm sure there are mature people sitting there say, listen, let's go on. So far, you know, there's never been any downside or penalty for anything uh, wrong happening. So, so I'm sure that the data is not that the data is going to be out permanently. The data at some point in time will come back. And as an outsider, without one second, sure. if this becomes an accepted data set, then it can only hurt you for not being part of it. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's, that's my only point of view. I mean, you can... Uh, if, if you genuinely believe that it won't be, then that's good for you, but it, otherwise you won't be part of the consider. Huh? There will be a price to pay. Well, yeah, there will be a price to pay. So July is the next month, uh, when should we, or June? No, I, I don't think it will be July. Uh, so the field work, the good thing is that even before this report came out, the field work had already started. So on 5th of April, this yeah. quarter's field work had already started. Yeah. Now, one thing you have to remember that in a large country like India, you know, sometimes you get floods. Like in Kerala, we got sure. delayed because of floods. So it's not as if it will go exactly as per the calendar quarter, but I think it will be reasonable to expect around August or so, but I, I don't have a date to give just now. So sometimes around then, because after the whole quarter is done, then the tech comp takes about a month to check, verify, lo lots and lots of efforts with tech, tech comp and the research agency go through. So, uh, so the anticipation is around July, August perhaps is when the next quarter will come out and roll accordingly. And a press conference, only a press release for us. <laughs> no press conference, <laughs> no sandwiches, <laughs> no uh, event, but press release definitely will send you. Is there anything that I may have missed and uh, probably you, uh, one of you would like to highlight and we can Ask talk. him, he's the one who's going to go to He's the one who's going to go to happy. <laughs> By the way, we're a friend, so if you don't get it wrong. Uh, <laughs> and, and he's the architect of a lot of the <laughs> stuff that's happening. Yeah. 
and TV and print. No, uh, you know, we have str uh, strangely, what we have not gone into today, which is very important, is there is a huge part of the study which has to do with product and service linkage, right? So, we have talked only about the media aspect of this, uh, we need to talk about the marketing aspect of it. Uh, you know, many of the issues that come up when you think as an advertiser have to do with category penetration, with brand penetration, sure. with usage rates, with you know, trial rates, repurchase rates. This is brand managers stock in trade. The wonderful thing is that you know, IRS has always had loads of that data. IRS always had also had great stuff for policy planners. So, for example, household sizes, for example, you can actually compute reproductive rates by mm -hmm. looking at IRS data, right. So, if you are talking about policy planning for family welfare department, uh, if you are talking about policy planning for hygiene and uh, public health, uh, there is content available in these kind of studies, whether it is BI, whether it is IRS, which actually fuels that, right and which can also therefore fuel for example, public service advertising and public service communication. Uh, one of the things I think IRS will have to do a little more actively going forward is to play that part of the content much, much more on the front foot, right. I think it needs to be and we are all to blame, right. We have all been there and, and Ashish, you only get into that role because somebody, somebody shanghai's you into it. I got shanghai into it, he got shanghai into it, you got, you get kidnapped, rolled in a blanket and stuffed into that job. So, nobody says, ha ha, I want to be <laughs> chair of TechCom. It is not the happiest position to be in. But, I think uh, one good thing is that the, you know, there is more opportunities to distribute this, this content digitally through MRUC's digital presence. I think there needs to be more work in using it creatively and more work in being able to bring linkages between you know consumption of products and services uh, of demographic shifts which are happening. So, for example, one of the things that has missed us which is very, very important is household sizes have systematically come down. Yeah. You know, like I said, three of us have been looking at this study for the last 14 years, right. During which time we have gone down on a 12 plus basis from four and a half to less than 4 now, right. This number will keep dropping. This is good news. Households are getting smaller, reproductive rates have come down. They have come down most sharply in that same Hindi heartland, right. With the rise of education, rise of literacy, better incomes, homes are reducing in size. The pakka house and the kacha house which we pick up in the IRS, we have seen a shift in that. So, there are many beautiful, you know, sort of leading indicators which the IRS produces which have not been showcased as well as they should be. I think there is a, as, at, as the stu study goes back to being continuous, there will be reason to revisit them. I personally also believe that we are now two years shy of the next census, right. There are many variables which the census of India has changed over time as it has picked them up. There may be an opportunity for the, for the industry at large to work a little more closely with the census of India to see if there are you know, because when you talk about data fusion, you are looking for merging variables, right. So, if we can build fusion variables into the census of India, which can tie in to stuff that we do, then IRS oblique BI becomes a powerful policy planning tool for the government of India. I want to add a couple of points, um, I mean, which we find interesting particularly, I think we have touched upon them, but just to kind of reiterate the point. I think one is the readership overall and you know, so on and so forth. I think the other one is this whole thing about NCCS or yeah. however you say it. And uh, you know, especially in English print, you know, that 85, 90 percent of the readers are actually in that, uh, that bracket of income and uh, ownership of durables and so on. And I think that also offers a segmentation if you like to, uh, you know, because uh, my own belief is that India is not like a, you know, 80-20, it does not follow the typical 80-20 that uh, rule, you know. Uh, it most likely follows a 95-5 rule that 5 percent of the people consume 95 percent of certain categories. Uh, you know, I am not talking about food grains and all that, but when you come to, you know, uh, a lot of other stuff. And therefore, you know, 
uh, getting more sharply into their media habits and consumption habits helps planners to do a better job of uh, so whether it's a high end house or a car or a whatever it is in that area newspapers clearly showing a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, readership and and growth as well and lastly i think to me personally what was heartening is um, um, is is the continuous engagement and growth of women and youth to this category i think that is a that's interesting uh, we need to get under the skin and understand what is driving that and how uh, and some efforts are being made by publishers i think to drive that as well but i think uh, uh, you know whichever way you cut and uh, slice and dice the numbers the number of women engaging with the category and the number of youths is in 20 to 29 years engaging with the category is increasing and is quite substantial uh, which is unlike you know what we sitting in our sort of boardrooms may want to think about and say oh, well you know which youngster I mean, my son doesn't read the newspaper but my son may not be representative of the rest of india so i think that's uh, uh, that's an important thing which i noticed hmm. so would you like to add something no i just have one thing to say that you know a lot of credit i don't want to make it personal yeah. but a lot of credit goes to ashish for the way this is is run so you hope and pray because you know it sounds very simple to say big things here and having run but to make things happen to get finances to get everyone board is a it's a hercule task especially when you're doing it for the industry it's not a day job so my only request is that Ashish continue in the next two years. You know, life will be. Uh, <laughs> this is this is the, the only way I can pull it off. I thought he was my friend. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pull it off. So he's pull. I mean, practical because you know it's very fine to say big things, but finally to make it happen. You know, like I said in some other context, the uh, intelligence and the skill is all there. Yeah. Right. The ability to make it happen, and yeah. I think Ashish done a terrific yeah. job. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I totally agree with that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so the boarding school blanket you just got. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> no, I, I'm grateful to for Shashi for saying that, but it is truly a team effort. I think the TechCom chair Vikram is and his team have really worked very hard. With support from people like Shashi. I mean, these have been the sort of guys who've laid the pillars for it. And I must say, my board. I mean, they have been very supportive. We've taken some tough decisions, some quick decisions. For example, we didn't get into field until all the money was in. That's a decision we took, and the board agreed to that uh, on that bit. And I'm. Hopeful that now things will be uh, more smoother, and the next chairman, which certainly won't be me, will hopefully <laughs> <laughs> take it up faster and better. Jishnu, as an advertiser, your expectation from next IRS? Well, I hope consistency. I, I and I hope I think that's my primary uh, need from it. Uh, it doesn't disappear; it stays true. I hope everybody joins the fold, and not specifically from IRS, but the point that Paritosh made can't be underlined more, which is to converge the various places that advertisers put their money so that it is one universe af after all. I, I think that's easier said than done, unfortunately, but we'll have to live with parallel streams. Um, but yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being Thank here. You. Thanks. 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 Than